Hey guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to thank you so much for the continuous support, suggestions, and phone calls. Today's vlog, we visit the Sam Motto Training and Demonstration Center in Mandeville, operated by Cardi, and we're talking about manure management for small ruminant animals. Guys, we talked about manure um, utilization the other day with a vlog up by Chelsea in Chelsea Best Farm. So now we're here at where the whole vermicompost project started with a young guy, Bruce. A runoff Cardi now, you know, Mr. Mr. and Mario. Um, definitely taking over for Mr. Ferran Legacy. So we want them to kind of run through the vermicomposting process with us. Because I think this is something that we very underutilize for small women and farmers. The, the potential that we convert in waste into a product that can be sold and earn some income. So Bruce and Mario will show us how is management on the farm. And Mario, what's up? Well, today we are here to talk about vermicomposting. As you can see, we are standing on the pits of where the, um, the process takes place. It's a wonderful process, a very simple one, and we are here to inform you today about vermicomposting. I'll let Mr. Jackson say a few words. Mr. Jackson, go right. on, boss. First and foremost, I have to say on behalf of Cardi, welcome to Samoto DT, DTC. And um, alongside Mr. Thomas, we here are technical assistant. And Part of our program here at Samoto is that we are responsible for research and the dissemination of data. And as such, here at Samoto, we have 10 vermicomposting bins that have a dimension of 8 by 4 and is no deeper than 1 to 2 inches. So here about at Samoto, we generally take an integrated approach, whereby the output from one operation is mainly the input of another operation. Now here at, here at Samoto, what we do is that we take the pieces directly excreted from our animals that is inclusive of sheep and goats and we service our bins. So what we normally do, we go underneath the pens due to the fact that we have a pallet system and it is elevated off the ground and as such the feces fall directly on the floor. Now as, as of such, we then get a wheelbarrow and transfer all this material to our vermicomposting pit. And but, but before we before immediate input, what we tend to do is to create a simple compost pile which you can see over there. Okay. So what we do is that we ensure that it gets a little aeration. So we don't directly, we don't take it directly from the house and put it straight into the bin. We leave it for about a day or two so you can get some aeration, so you can get some solarization from the sun. Then when it is transferred, it is evenly distributed within the bins. At times, depending on the amount, what we do, we split the bin in half. Okay. Right? And as Mr. Jackson had mentioned, we don't go more than two inches high. Thick. Reason being, we're going to explain some of the management practices that we foretake within the vermicompost bin. Yeah, tell me some of that because I see you guys have um, shade cloth over it. Why Why the shade cloth? Alright, so the main purpose of the shade cloth is, is to prevent the birds from coming in and scratching and getting the worms. Right? So if there wasn't a siren cloth right here, then there is a high possibility that the birds would come down and eat all of the worms okay. which now would cause the operation to become dysfunctional mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so vermicompost is the use of worms preferably the california red worm to break down on earth to get compost mm. which is known as vermicompost so during the process what happens is that the worms would feed on the, the manure and break it down and will now excrete the, the, the worm cast, something known as worm casting, which is otherwise simply known as the feces. So that material then is used as the vermicompost. Okay. Mr. Jackson can tell you some of the management practices as, for example, the weekly or daily procedures that are done to maintain this bin. Yeah, do we do weekly or we do daily if anything? Alright, so on a weekly or daily basis here at Samoto, what we do in order to service our bin compost, we have a drum here that we use to catch our water, okay. right? And one of our practices is that we actually get a watering can and come and sprinkle some water within the bed. But however, we don't want to have that excessive amount of water within the bed because you don't want to actually flood the worms. The main purpose of the water is that we want to have an abundant amount of moisture within the vermicomposting bin. And as such, this will actually help the, the vermicompost worms to actually thrive. And um, within the system, as we made mention earlier, the mesh, the perforated mesh, also acts as a direct shield to the impact of raindrops. 
because you know that you have something known as splash erosion and one of the main factors is that the impacts of these raindrops can actually cause the feces when you vermicompost to actually dislodge from one area to the next okay now if you guys look at the end of our fins we have a drainage system set up in place Oh. that actually helps us to get rid of the excess amount of water because at the end of the day you don't want to have your worms within the vermicomposting bin and that due to the effect of rainfall you lose everything I get you because yes, if smart. you don't have any worms you don't yes. have any vermicompost and another important factor that Mr. Jackson had mentioned is the moisture mm -hmm. the ideal moisture is for example when you have a sponge and you dip it, in, dip it in some water and then when you squeeze it out you're supposed to be able to squeeze that sponge without water that is the correct amount of moisture that, that you want inside of it also another thing the outlet pipe is very important but also what is important is that the pipe should be meshed because what can happen is that if you have too much rainfall or it is flooded the manure along with the worms we'll can wash oh, out so, so you, you mesh over protect it. your worms so protect your, your manure and then put a mesh there to prevent such action All right, so boss. it is important the turning of this oh, you is turn very it? important Yes. How often? So we, we normally do it once once per week, okay. twice per week, depending on if we had a lot of rainfall or not. So you don't really want to disrupt the worms on a day-to-day -day basis. So you want them to work and then know what they cause. What they will do is move down to the bottom, work on the bottom. So what you do next is to turn it so whatever is on top that hasn't been exposed to the worm, you bring it down to them. Because mm -hmm. once you put them on the top, put them in, they're going to bar down to the, to the surface. So that is one of the important factors to determine how quick your compost can be broken down. Ideally, it takes up to 21 days, 3 weeks. Um, depending on management, your management, it takes a month or more. Okay. But, yes, and also what impacts how quick or how soon you can get vermicompost is the population of your worms. Alright, so my question about the population of the worms, how is it that you ensure that they, you know you have a healthy worm population. So that you always add manure or is there something else to keep them thriving. I don't know. So, so naturally, once there is manure there, they will stay. Okay. Right. So if, for example, if you're hungry and you're sitting down, what are you going to do? You're going to source food. Mm -hmm. So if there is no food there, they will tend to migrate or go elsewhere. Elsewhere, I, right. I see. So you just have to ensure that your management practices. You observe it. You turn it. You see when it's ready to harvest. Once it's ready to harvest. That means there is no more, nothing else there. It's only their casting is left, which means the vermicompost they'd want to leave. Do, do you have a, like a nutrient value? Or, is that the right word? Um, nutrient, nutrient composition. The nutrient composition, I like what a vermicompost would look like. It has been done, we have that um, information. Okay, Mr. So Friends, you have the information for what the profile looks like. Um, do you have an idea of the cost for it though, as you know anybody that's selling it out there in the public? Well, we, we ourselves do sell it. Okay. Yes, we sell it at 1200 per bag. 1200 per bag. Yeah. What's um, that just bag? 50 pound bag. 50, 50 pound bag. Feed bags. So what you can do is that if you're coming to the Samoto to purchase, you can bring a bag. Or there are chances are that we will have bags. Because what we do whenever we sip it out, we bag them and sell them. So you guys provide worms to farmers too if they want some? Definitely. Yeah. So what we do um, here at the station, we actually have a designated site that we actually house the worms and from that we actually sell them $300 per dozen and okay. generally persons come here on a regular basis seeking to get worms to start their own project. However, um, something that we might add to this is that within Jamaica itself there isn't a set standard and as such the Bureau of Standards Jamaica has actually made it an initiative to actually create a benchmark or a standard to actually sell this vermicompost to farmers okay. and as such we are, we are looking to actually get a skeletal system mm -hmm. to actually facilitate the pricing and as such the dissemination of vermicompost to farmers because really and truly at the end of the day if you can do something to offset the cost on your small ruminant operation or your farm in general this is something that you might actually look forward to yes yes i, right? I support so, so, that so, so for proof of the work that the worms are doing, we're going to show you some stages of okay. vermicompost. For nice. example, this bin right here, mm -hmm. this is a very early stage. Early stage? Yes. All right. So they're so stage one? Yes. They're underneath, it, underneath doing their work. They can come down. We can show you. Okay, 
But here, you can see it start to get in a little dusty. Yes, you find yes. a little to no pellet. You have a little bit of pellets in there. So work is being done. So stage two. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. that one. Alright, so and this is basically the final product of what vermicompost here at oh, Samoto. Yeah. So, Very friable. So yes, what yes. we normally do is that we sieve it out and bag it and wait. So we normally go for about 50 pounds here about yeah. and then sell it to the farmers. Okay. The bottom is concreted? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. the bottom is concreted. You don't, you, you, want, you need the bottom to be concreted because yes, for instance, yes, and they will borrow away yeah, and, and leave. I so you see. want it concrete so they cannot escape. Okay. So that's one of the worms. So basically one of the worms. So basically you can see that worm is not really healthy because there is not mm -hmm. left. nothing else. Yes. What color is that one? Okay. See. So turn, turn. Script. Okay. That room is kind of weak and it's very dark. Yeah. yeah. Right. The healthy room is a little bit lighter in color. A little bit lighter in color. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Ferrer. This is generally referred to as the black dust. The black dust. Very, very. Our black gold is very, very valuable. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Is that one? Yes, that That's strong. Yeah, same here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me try this. So yeah, ideally some things that are not supposed to be in the vermicompost are acidic items such as cabbage lettuce and peelings of pineapples. So you don't want to add anything or uh, food type or uh, scraps that are acidic to your compost. Right? So you just try to use more neutral and alkaline based, um, scraps from whatever. From your kitchen, can be from the farm. So, they have different types of composting, hence the name vermicomposting. And as such as Bruce made mention to us, it relates to what to add and what not to add. You can have like a bokashi methods and then you stack and pile composting. So at the end of the day, you just really need to look into that. Alright. Choose vermicomposting. 